In this video, we would like to show you different cases of endophthalmitis, post-traumatic, especially needle prick injuries due to needle prick injuries, due to other traumas after crab and after post cataract. So what is endophthalmitis? It is the most serious blinding complication of the eye. It most occurs after cataract surgery but can also occur after glaucoma surgery and trauma as well the incidence after cataract surgery is 0.1 percent after trabeculectomy is 1 percent and after trauma is 10 percent and the most common pathogen causing post cataract end of thalmitis is staph epidermidis after crab is streptococcus pneumoniae and haemophilus influenzae and after trauma is bacillus cereus. The most cases occurs within six weeks of the surgery but usually majority of the cases occurs within a week. In this video we would like to discuss the risk factors and how to prevent the incidence, incidence of endophthalmitis. So the first risk factor is a posterior capsular rupture. Few days back one of my colleague performed 10 cases of cataract surgery on a list and only one got end of thalmitis. When we investigated post PCR occurred in that particular case. The other risk factor is diabetes especially the uncontrolled diabetes they are more prone to develop infection the other risk factors are prolonged surgical time combined procedures like phaco with vitrectomies or phaco with traps clear corneal sutureless incisions temporal incisions are more prone to get infection wound leak delayed post-op topical antibiotics until the day after surgery topical anesthesia adnexal diseases like blepharitis conjunctivitis dacryocystitis the source of infection can come from unsterilized instruments ot air infected surgeon or ot staff contaminated solutions during the surgery infected conjunctiva and adenexa prophylaxis the most effective measure till date is the installation of 5% povidone iodine into the conjunctival furnaces and leaving it undisturbed for 3 minutes. What mistake we commonly do is to wash it after 30 seconds to 1 minute. If you give proper time to poiodine iodine 3 minutes, chances of endophthalmitis becomes very less. The other proven medication is intracameral moxifloxacin or cefuroxime 1 mg in 0.1 ml injection at the end of the surgery reduces the risk of end of thalmitis. Now starting the post-op topical medications as early as 3 hours after the surgery if done under peribulbar local anesthesia and after 1 hour if done topically it also reduces the chances of infection. Oral moxifloxacin 400 mg once daily or clarithromycin 500 mg BD also effective. And in high risk patients, daily slit lamp examination for one week can also reduce chances of infection because early detection and prompt treatment will increase the chances of combating the infection very well. The other mistake we often do as a routine is the next day post-op examination followed by one week. We should know that most pathogens causing endophthalmitis they multiply slowly inside the eye and the signs and symptoms usually start to develop on second and third day post-op surgery when body defense mechanisms are overcome by the pathogens. So try to examine high risk patients on second or third post op day as well or you can tell the patient that come on the second post op day not first post op day because you can miss end of thalmitis on first post op day easily 
and then when the such patients comes on routine one week follow up or due to pain and decreased vision on fourth and fifth day post op the irreversible damage has already been done early early resuturing of the leaking wounds can help reduce the chances of end of thalmitis limit the entry of extra personnel into the surgical and sterilization rooms can also reduce the chances of end of thalmitis needle prick injuries when the children play with the syringes and needles they most often end up in post traumatic end of thalmitis so stop giving the syringes or needles to the children and you can avoid post traumatic end of thalmitis thank you